Hi, everybody. So Gamescom first night is happening right now as we're recording. Well, it kind of wrapped up and there's going to be more stuff tomorrow and the next day, I believe. Um, So here to discuss some of the things that caught our attention. Here's Johnny. And he's somewhat alive. <laughs> I get the feeling we're both half dead right now. Well, to be fair, we are recording this at late for us. It's the next day for you. So, yeah, there might be some, maybe a slightly low energy level or something. But to be fair, there were some things that were shown that are worth talking about. Two big things and I for just, sure. But... And, I, and, I, and I just got done streaming about an hour ago at the time of recording, so... My voice is probably going to have some vocal fry. Yeah, a little bit. Were you yelling at the at the game again? Uh, no. Me and my friend were both shouting because we were getting excited and goofy. What were you playing? Tekken 8. Oh, okay. That would do it. Yeah, and she's a silly person to start with, so we were both just getting loud and hyper. Oh, yeah, that's fair. But it ended up so, being uh, a good time, though, right? Oh, yeah. It was a good time in general. But, if you yeah. don't know, me and John both stream on Twitch. Uh, links for that will be in the description. So take a look at those. If you come by and say hi, that would be awesome. But yes, we and we will a... be yep. and we will be streaming together at least a couple of the games that we're going to discuss tonight. Mm -hmm. This first one I want to bring up, I don't think we're going to, but this is something that I'm actually interested in trying, and it might be sacrilegious, maybe to you or for some. Black Ops Six. I'm not interested in it, but. I and I may hate Call of Duty, but I'm not going to hate on anyone who actually likes the franchise unless they're actively belligerent towards me first. <laughs> well, to be fair, like, you know, I'm on and off with Call of Duty. I don't really play the multiplayer anymore, but there's a reason I'm excited for Black Ops 6. It's because it's the it's the campaign. The campaign is done by Raven Software and Raven's one of my favorite developers because they did the campaign why are they for one Cold of... War. Ah, I was going to ask, why are they one of your favorite devs? Well, they make some of the best shooters I've ever played. Like, they did the campaign for Cold War, which is probably one of the better campaigns for Call of Duty. But they also did Soldier mm -hmm. of Fortune, Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, Jedi Academy, Heretic, Hexen, Wolfenstein 2009, Singularity. So they've got a extensive back catalog. And Quake 4, yeah. But they've also done more than shooters. Like, they have also did... Did you ever play the Marvel Ultimate Alliance games? Yes. They made those. I liked those, so... Yeah. I at least like one thing from their back catalog. Yeah, and then the other one, they're also known for one of the better, one of the best Wolverine games. Which one? X-Men Origins Wolverine for 360 and PS3. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I didn't play that one. Yeah because I was kind of not in a superhero mindset at the time. But yeah, Raven did that game, and I, I think Raven knows how to make good games and compelling experiences, and it was Definitely. nice to see them at the helm. So, like, for me, Black Ops 6, that's the reason I want to play it, just because they're making the campaign, and they know how to make a good campaign. Mm -hmm. So that might be alone worth it, but that's really it for Call of Duty for me. Was there anything else that kind of caught your attention? Well, looking through the list, because like I said, I was trying to go through some stuff. Uh, obviously Diablo 4, but I'm a Diablo fan. I've yet to really get into Diablo. I will probably give Diablo 4 a chance at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. What's one thing you but, saw? Uh, you know, I was excited for uh, Little Nightmares 3. I need to play that sequel. But I liked the first Little Nightmares. It was actually a good game. I need to play both games. I haven't actually played them yet but mm -hmm. i know they're my kind of game because we've discussed off podcast before how much i really love platformers mm -hmm. and it's so. a very atmospheric one so it's more akin to like say limbo or inside mm -hmm. but more horror themed so i think that could be but a but as you know i just love platformers so you know if we get any big budget platformers i'm always happy which Excuse me, sorry, because again, it is late, so. There is something I saw that was announced. I don't know if it was announced at Gamescom, but the team that made the original Little Nightmares and Little Nightmares 2 is working on a game called Reanimal, and that's supposed to be co-op. Right. I did see that. I It was at Gamescom. I completely forgotten about it because there was just so much announced and most of it was kind of mid. At best. They had a couple of interesting things, but no, like, that's one that stands out. So that could be a fun co-op game. Mm-hmm. And I'd be willing to try it because it looked interesting, but I didn't remember it because, like I said a moment ago, just so much got announced all at once, and most of it kind of is, okay, not my kind of thing. Moving on. So. so continuing on. I know there's uh, one I saw, uh, the first Berserker, Kazan. Oh, yeah, that looked cool. Yeah. That's that's coming out early next year, and there's you can sign up for a beta test at least for PlayStation Five and Xbox Series. So I did. So I want to see if I can get if I can try that early. Nice. Um, 
usually because it has some souls like inspiration and that's a genre of game i just haven't really gotten into yet Mm -hmm. so that's kind of why it's like it's a little on my radar but it's not sticking out in my mind other than the art style Mm -hmm. i think that was the other thing that stuck out with it is because it's also kind of works in the dungeon fighter online universe okay that's the other thing that kind of stuck out with me because i was i like dnf duel so it's taking some inspirations from that you know what now that you mention it i can kind of see it Mm -hmm. but yeah, like what else uh, caught my attention was the announcement that uh, Starfield would be coming to PS5, which, as you know, my sources had tipped me off to a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And it kind of seems I was like, like that oh. was the case, too. Yeah. And the Indiana Jones one, I knew it would come to PS5 eventually. I'm surprised it's coming this soon. It's not launched, though, right? No, it's like, let me see what the release date is real quick in real time. You can kind of babble yeah, away like, while actually, I do we, it. Yeah, because they announced the release date uh, for it. I think it was December 9th for Xbox and PC. And it is day one Game Pass, at least for that game. But in terms of PS5, I thought I heard something about early 2025. December 9th is when it comes to Windows and Xbox. Okay. And it's spring 2025 for PS5. Okay. So, no, so like, I imagine it'll be like a... I imagine it'll be like, what, a six month wait? I think that's probably fair. A couple months wait. Yeah, like nothing too long. But I would say the worst case scenario would have been a year, but they said spring. So we don't have to wait too bad. Like I said, probably six months. So so May. Yeah, May ish or June, probably. Yeah, like right before the start of summer. Yeah. And you know what? It's Mm -hmm. kind of a perfect summer game. If you think about it, it's going to be not that long. Mm -hmm. but it's going to be popcorn-y like the action movies the series is based on, and it's just going to be a fun romp. I'm curious to see how it turns out, because like this is different for machine games, but if they can still keep some of the strong writing they had for the Wolfenstein games for this Mm -hmm. one, that could be interesting. Definitely. Um, But I think that this is indicative of what's going to happen with Xbox exclusives going forward. We'll probably have a half... We'll probably have a half-year wait between when it launches on its home console and the ps5 minimum maybe right yeah because starfield's like, coming I'm to gonna... ps5 right but that's like been a year hasn't it e- yeah <laughs> yes but that was before other events took place so mm-hmm. that's per- that's why um i am gonna talk about something that my sources have told me about and you can discuss it with me killer instinct 2013 will get a ps5 port i thought i heard i i I could see that happening it also could be used to build a pipe for a new ki potentially which i'm hearing rumblings that that's definitely in development now it's just too early to announce it the curious thing though is going to be who's working on it i'm hearing that snk is in the discussion for it if that's true that could be a little bit nuts i would really love to see what they would do with ki they could do something interesting with ki they like they would have to go insane with combos though i mean They've had a few combo-heavy games before, have they not? They have, yeah. But I don't think anything up to the level of KI. Mm-hmm. Which one is their most combo-crazy? Obviously, King of Fighters. Yes, but which entry? Well, if we're talking new SNK here, 15, obviously. Okay, what about older? I'm guessing 13. 13, yeah, because 13, you could do infinites. But the thing is, I, you could do that with some of the other games, too. You could do Infinites as well. Or it was, like, broken. Like, if you picked Chin in King of Fighters 95 on a specific stage, mm-hmm. where you could t- you could basically KO him with a touch-of-death combo before he even touches the ground. But I think uh, I they remember. could balance it out with, like, combo breakers, because that's what that's what KI is known for. Yep. So it could and work. Counter bre- and counter breakers as well. Mm-hmm. So I'd just be curious to see how they work out their game mechanics for it. Definitely. But I think SNK out of all of the Japanese developers is probably the best one. They consistently put out really good 2D fighters. Mm-hmm. I think they you're... also know how to gone. They also know how to work within a budget and make the most of their assets. Unless Microsoft gave them a blank check or something. In which case they would just go completely nuts. But we already know SNK is working on a new art of fighting and a new Samurai Showdown game, which we'll see at some point in the future. I'd love to. Know and the more. Samurai Showdown is going to be a RPG game, which is going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. You can sign me up for that. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, definitely. We're definitely going to do a podcast on that when that releases. Like we're going to talk about our experiences with the game. 
Yeah, because I want to see what they're going to offer. And well, first we got to talk about at least we got to talk about that at least when they're revealed for sure. Yeah. When do you think it'll be revealed? I'm imagining next year, probably Tokyo Game Show, maybe TGS or something, or they could do something crazy at like the Game Awards or even something like that. So 2025 for sure. Probably either either Samurai Showdown or Art of Fighting. I think it'll two. depend on which it'll depend further. on which one. Yeah, because if it's if Art of Fighting is going to be like not a super huge fighting game, if you know what I mean, mm-hmm. then I could see them announcing it at the Game Awards this year, potentially. Potentially. Like, it depends. Like, who knows? Maybe Art of Fighting maybe isn't a fighting game either. They said it was, though. They confirmed that? Yeah. Because I thought there was ideas being thrown around for Art of Fighting, so. There were, but it looks like it's going to be a fighting game, so. so and we'll Sam Show will be the. Action. And Sam Show will be the. Yeah. That's going to be the more. Uh, definitely. And. If Art of Fighting does turn into a fighting game, which I believe it will be because of what SNK have said, I think that it's probably going to be a pretty basic fighting game. Oh, so it doesn't need to be too crazy. No, like I kind of imagine it'll be like a 2D Virtua Fighter kind of thing. Or I'd say like early Virtua Fighter, like say for 3D Virtua Fighters, early mm-hmm. base. You know what? Maybe they'll make Art of Fighting into a full 3D fighter and that would be its unique selling point. That could work, I could see. Because they've got to differentiate their fighting games a little bit more because King fighters yeah that's a 3v3 2d fighter traditional 2d fighter nothing wrong with that i love it as you know then sam show is either an rpg or a 2d fighting game with weapons and then you know they don't really have anything that makes the rest of their fighting game ips particularly unique mechanic well mechanically they're unique but you get what i'm getting at basically it's all 2d fighters is what i'm mm-hmm. trying to say because they did do put their hands in 3d and sometimes it didn't work out very well but sometimes it did like in the form of maximum impact well yeah there's that but also keep in mind that was kind of at the advent of 3d so mm-hmm. it was kind of the wild west and i think that given that there was less experience at snk at the time working in 3d environments whereas compared to now it's just they are a little more experienced with it mm-hmm. but we're we're gonna talk about SNK stuff soon. We should see if there was anything else though before we get to that. Definitely. Like what else would there be? Obviously Borderlands fans, Borderlands 4. I think that was that was unexpected. Or expected. Unexpected. Sorry. Yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. Uh not something I'm particularly excited about because I've played the Borderlands games. I think they're cool, but they also don't particularly stand out to me, if mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Like I love their graphics and I love their humor, but you know. I think looter shooters are kind of played out at this point. I feel like with them, like, you're going to get the enjoyment if you're playing it with someone. It's the same thing, like, with Diablo. But the difference, like, I find with Borderlands and Diablo is that, like, with Borderlands, you really need somebody to play it with. Mm -hmm. As where Diablo, you can play it with friends and it's still great, but you can play it alone and it's still great. That makes sense. Um, But I know it was slightly fixed in Borderlands 3. Like, that's supposed to be better. But I haven't tried three yet. But given how people reacted to Borderlands 3 and how the movie was, because I've heard bad things, not seen it yet, will be seeing it soon because a friend's treating me. So that'll be nice. Mm-hmm. Um, like, we're going to have fun with the fact that it's a bad movie. Like, we are going in full fat knowing, yeah, this is not going to be great, but we're going to have fun at the movie's expense. Basically, you'll just laugh at the movie for it. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes there's entertainment in that. There can be, yep, depending on it. But yeah, so we know Borderlands is coming. Um, the one I'm actually but excited I... for is Space Marine 2. That was announced, I didn't notice. They showed off some new gameplay for Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2. Just something ah, brief. Yeah, that was something that again slipped my attention because there were so many kind of generic shooters announced or shown off, you know? A couple of things here and there. Like They, they didn't have other things to spring that out, but... That's why we got to filter through and just like see what there is. Like one, I know we talked about Civilization 7. Mm-hmm. You know what? I like RTSs and these Civilization games, so pretty cool to me. But that's not a game I'm going to get at full price. It still carries the addictive one more turn thing. So I'm curious mm-hmm. to see how that game turns out. But we have but we did get a release date, though, of February 11th. You know what? I've said it before and I'll say it again. 2025 is really looking like a weak year for gaming to me. I'm not going to say that yet. There are things that there i think we just need the dates but a lot of people a lot of games are holding back their dates because of grand theft auto which i've covered in a previous video go and check that out it's going to be in the description but we know it's going to come out in the fall so as long as things stay clear of like the fall they're then fine it should be okay yeah unless of course it's something like trails because you know totally different audience uh, 
You know what? Watch them put a new Trails game out on the same day as Grand Theft Auto 6. That would actually be pretty funny and wouldn't surprise me because Kainos Kaseki, I'm hearing, is going to get a release date for the West pretty soon into next year. Like the release date will be announced and it's going to be fall. Mm -hmm. You're, you mean Daybreak 2 or the Farewell of Zemuria? No, Farewell of Zemuria. Okay. It's it's called uh, Kaino Kaseki Farewell Ozemuria. Okay, I just know it by that other subtitle. Yeah, I I just said it because Kaino Kaseki's shorter. So we'll have Anyways, to see what's up uh, with that. Um, Little Nightmares Three that, is one you said a little bit about. We we talked about it briefly for a minute. Yep, you know horror platformer. I'm down. There is one thing that, that that was shown that I was pleasantly surprised to see, but we're going to get more information about it in December. There's a new Mafia game, and I <laughs> like the Mafia series. So it's kind not, of surprising I, we're getting a new one, too. I've not played the Mafia series, but, eh, you know, violent games tend to not be my thing. Yeah, like, the thing is, like, the Mafia games are, like, violent, but the thing with Mafia oh. is its story. Which is why I will give the series a chance eventually, but I'm not particularly gunning yes, pun intended, to play it. Mm -hmm. I would say if you haven't picked them up, I think like the Mafia games are at least on sale right now at the time of this recording. I have Mafia 2 because of um, PlayStation Plus. Mm -hmm. And I know Mafia 3 and then Mafia 1 got remade. Mm -hmm. But like, this, but I'm not, yep. that, I'm not that surprised that we're seeing a new one because it is a fairly popular series. Mm -hmm. I just kind of think so, when, I thought it was going to go dormant for a while. Like I heard rumors that there was going to be a new Mafia game coming. Or that Hangar 13 was working on something. I just wasn't sure what. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to segue this just real quick because I want to talk about a rumor I've been hearing. This is kind of like as an aside. You know how uh, the Hitman studio is working on a James Bond game? Yeah, Project 007. I'm hearing that it's going to get a potential release date next year. They still have to do like a debut of gameplay and stuff. Do you think we're going to see that this year? Games, uh, Game Awards. I could see that because we, IO has, IO has been very quiet about that game. For a long time. Mm -hmm. But hopefully they won't keep, make us wait too much longer because I honestly want to see how that game's going to turn out. I'm intrigued for sure because I like the James Bond property as a whole. And like the last James Bond game we had was 007 Legends and that was over a decade ago if I remember correctly. Yep. Let me see if I can remember or find when it came quickly here. Yeah, 2012. It's been 12 years since we had a James Bond game. Which is crazy when you think about it. But at least it's not 25. Mhm. Mm or 26 leading into our next True. our next thing cuz this is actually one of the two things that we saw that really got us intrigued. But we knew this was going to be, we knew they were going to be there. We just didn't know exactly what capacity. We had ideas, yeah. but now they yep. dealt their hands. So why don't we yep. talk about though, Fatal Fury? Though I want to say one thing real quick. Monster Hunter Wilds, I'm interested. You already knew that. Let's move on. <laughs> mm -hmm. But why don't we talk about Fatal Fury? Do you want to start with Street Fighter since we got the Terry trailer and we can blitz through that real quick? Terry looks awesome. Yeah, and he we does. have a release window or did they give an official release date? It was September for Terry, right? Uh, Let me look real quick. Yeah, because they did show Terry gameplay. Terry looks awesome. I feel like he's going to take full advantage of that drive system and just I like, think he's going to be thing. Destroy he's going to be broken. You think he'll he's going to be broken? Yes, I think he's going to be as broken as he was during the early days of KOF 15, possibly more so. You think we're getting to the ranks of like VRT? Yes, a VRT for that. So like, I'm curious to see Terry, though. Like, I think he's going to be an excellent fit. I think he's going to be a great fit. And you know what? He's got me wanting to play Street Fighter 6 again, a game that I had very sour first impressions of. Like, I still got to go back and play Street Fighter 6. Like, I want to play that campaign because that mm -hmm. campaign is awesome. And the fact that they are implementing the DLC characters or Seasons Pass characters into is it great. is a nice touch. So he's September. That's it. That's all we know. OK, but we did get the t the terry and my combinations in different ways but terry's first for september my is coming out sometime in the winter at least for street fighter 6 but in terms of fatal fury they showed off my and oh boy right i let's just say my jaw was on the floor and quagmire's giggity <laughs> is too mild I'm i do saying like her i do like her redesign i'm saying giggity because tos mm -hmm. well you could just say giggity twice though i mean i kind of just did <laughs> okay fair but yeah so but they showed my and my's redesign actually looks really good i'm very I impressed agree. with it i like the leather look <laughs> 
again, like, to sound weird, it's just because it wraps around her assets. Yes. I pointed that out in my video, too, when I when I saw the trailer. be like, oh, I see, I see that SNK knows how to make good character designs. But so far, every character that has been revealed for City of the Wolves have been on point. Mm-hmm. Even I'm the one that, even I'm one that's, like, maybe in favor of Billy's redesign. And I know quite a few people are not, apparently. I, I love Billy's redesign and it reminds me of billy idol who i saw about uh 12 days ago now so oh that must have been a hell of a show it was amazing what if they took inspiration from that for billy i think they did <laughs> because john pull up a billy idol picture from when he was younger when he had the spiked hair it's pretty much a fucking copy dude well it's also billy was kind of in need of a new look too yeah right the whole greasy guy with a pole was not gonna fly i could definitely see that with the hairstyle but i wonder this brings up a question though and this was brought up during the my trailer too besides seeing a new stage as well which is awesome and and it seems like a nod back to real bow to one of the real bout stages mm -hmm. my has an alternate costume which is her classic costume so this makes me wonder are there going to be classic outfit? Are there going to be alternate outfits for I all think characters? There will be. I think there will be for the older characters. Well, we know the, the Terry ones. one is a pre-order bonus. Yeah, the older ones less so, I think. You think so? Yeah. Well, we'll have to see. But in terms of what they did show, of what was shown, speaking of costumes, they added a feature back that I liked from King of Fighters 13. I'm so glad that feature is back too. And remember, I did say that my sources did tell me that they were toying with that feature. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to see that there for City of the Wolves. My question, though, is like, how many custom options do you have? I'm going to guess probably eight or nine. Mm -hmm. But it might be character dependent because it looked like every character had a different option. Every Yeah, it seems like every character has different options, like from the assumptions of it, like what we saw with um, Vox and Otaru. Yep. But I'm wondering also, how many I'm you can save, though, because like they probably will only let you save like four or five, I'm guessing. I'd say probably as many as Tekken 8. Which would be a, a, an all right number. Speaking of, I think that we're going to get more prints and patterns mm -hmm. as a season pass akin to the free items on the free season pass that we get from Tekken 8. I could see that happening because they can definitely expand upon this, but we need to see what they're going to do for customizations, how extensive it is, because initial impressions of it do look good. It might seem a little bit basic, kind of like how it was in 13 a bit, but it's nice that the options there. Mm -hmm. I am curious uh, because my friend Azza the Ace, go and give her a sub on YouTube and a follow on Twitch if you haven't already, guys. Super sweet person and super fun. Plays a lot of the same games me and John do. Anyways, uh, she found the King of Fighters 15 really hard on her hands. Do you think that uh, City of the Wolves is going to be easier on the hands, or do you think it's going to be just as difficult as KOF in that sense? I feel maybe slightly easier, but it's only just because of a slightly slower pace. But it's going to be tough like when you factor in the rev system, because they are really banking on that rev system, and it and shows. I am excite and I'm excited to rev it up. Don't forget to unleash your fury. I was wondering if you were going to follow my joke or if you were just going to go. OK, he's going dad joke mode. Too tired. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like the rev system, like it basically, like I said in the video, it's basically max mode all the time. Yep. And that's so, exciting. Mm -hmm. But it's nice of that course, they still have classic elements. Definitely. I do get the feeling that uh, City of the Wolves is going to be much more fun and easier to play on fight stick, though. Mm -hmm. depending on how their inputs it, work yeah it just feels like a game that was designed for stick and not for pad that's actually and something worth testing and to a degree i kind of feel the same with king of fighters 15 even though i can't quite get on with it on stick because you know how much i was struggling with the dual sense right mm -hmm. i do you know how and you remember how i was gifted a fight stick from a friend yeah and i tried it out and i said Okay, I can feel myself playing a little bit better, but it still feels weird because I hadn't trained myself on stick. I'm still not trained on stick. I'm getting better at it, but mm -hmm. not not great. Um, and then I bought the Hori Fighting Commander Okta just to review. I tested it out on King of Fighters 15, and I showed you that video that one night, remember? Of your combos, basically. Um, yes, and you noticed that I was doing really advanced stuff with Vanessa at that point, didn't you? You were starting to do a few more things with it that you had troubles with at the start. Yeah, and it brought me up from 
a piss poor fighter to an average one. Controllers do matter when it comes to fighting games. You got to find one that you're comfortable with. Yeah, for like like for gaming or anything in general, yeah, they do matter. You want to find something that works for you. And for general gaming, dual sense is my preferred option. And then for fighting games, KI, I can't play it on anything but stick. Because it seems to harken back to like the older style of games. Like that's what Fatal Fe like SNK does with their games. You can play them on pad. They do work. It just feels more optimized. Exactly. Um, but let's get back to Fatal Fury for a little bit. Um, we're getting 17 characters at launch and the game is not going to be bend me over and fuck my wallet priced. Which is interesting because like I, I went looking a little more into it. So that so that special edition is well, the there's base only edition. This is the base edition. I know. So. I know, and and you get five characters, which brings you to 22. And remember, I did say that we would get probably 20 characters at launch. Mm -hmm. My source was wrong on that front because we're getting 22 total for the first season, which is fine. Like, yeah, it's small, but I do feel it's like not... it's a weird tactic, though. If you think I about agree it with that. you. I agree with you. Maximilian Dude was actually covering that in his own video, and I totally agreed with him because the way it seems like SNK was trying to market it was like there was going to be a base edition that would be like 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't honestly, seem to be the way they're going with it. No, and honestly, I would have preferred if they'd done it that way because that would have been a great design choice or marketing choice, whatever you want to say, because then they could have been like, yeah, this game is going to be accessible to almost everyone. How much you want to bet they're going to do that later? Maybe. Maybe they're testing it to see if there's a market for it. Mm -hmm. In which case, I'm all for it, because if they do a standard edition that's 40 bucks, great. That means I can give it as a Christmas present or whatever to a lot of people and have a vibrant Fatal Fury City of the Wolves community at launch. Yeah, I'm curious to see how their model works with this, because, I mean, it is still pretty good that you're getting both the base game and season one, because they actually did try something like this before with Samurai Showdown. What did Samurai they do Showdown there? Samurai Showdown was a full price game. Mm-hmm. So I think it was like 80 bucks for Canadian for us. But their pre-order bonus was for that. And I think for like the first week of the game, the season, the season one pass was completely free. You know what? That's a cool model. So even if you didn't own Samurai Showdown 2019 at the time, you could still get the season pass for free for like a week. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're seeing a repeat of that of sorts here. For I City think you're right. I think you're right. Um, I was going to say something and my brain just completely dipped on me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we'll have to see what the model is. Like, for now, we'll just say the base model is that special edition. So you get the base game, 17 characters, and you get Season Pass 1, which grants you access to five more. Oh, I was going to say, what do you think the deluxe edition is actually going to include? Because remember, they held off for a long, long time on announcing the special edition, which we both bought for King of Fighters 15. So you mean physical release? Yeah, the physical release. What do you think we'll get for like the collector's edition? Because that was there was the standard edition and then collector's edition. Yeah, and we so both got the collector's edition. Yeah, so I think that special edition will be the base edition for retail. And then if they do a special like a, an actual special edition, probably full soundtrack, probably art book. And that's really it, which I'd be happy with. I'd also kind of like to see them do maybe a wall scroll. Mm -hmm. I think that would be cool. The, for me, the one thing I'd want, just because I've seen Limited Run and Pix and Love do it with SVC Chaos recently and some other SNK releases, mm -hmm. if they if they put it for retail, put have the game ship in like a Neo Geo shock box. I would love that. I'd want that. I I would get that immediately because I like the, I like the Neo Geo boxes. They look cool and they just have a nice sense of style to it. I agree, and it would be kind of cool if SNK. You know what? They could actually have a cool business model where they like sell just the shock boxes, nothing included in it, except for maybe like a manual that's styled from the era mm -hmm. inside the shock box and are like hey you want the shock box you want the manual that would have been included if this game released in the 90s or 2000s here you go that could be something i feel like that's something they would partner with limited run on for yeah but it would be if they just did it on their own they, they could, could do literally it, yeah. they could literally have like a small money printing business for us diehard fans for the diehard fans for that. Yeah. I'm curious to see when they're going to show off, if they're going to show off physical, when they're going to show off physical copies. Sorry. We know they're coming, but I have a kind of quarrel with that. And this What's is something we're going to have to test it? when it comes out. What's included oh, yeah. on the disc? We know that the RPG mode is not. It says you need a patch. If you watch the trailer, like yes, you, need, I a, you that. need to update it to play that. I mode. noticed that. I noticed that. Here's my theory on it. I think it was a mode they were intending to launch as part of season one, mm -hmm. but they managed to get it completed far more quickly, but not quick enough for it to be a feature that 
is included uh, when the game goes gold. You know what I mean? But that's interesting, though, because like if you look at the rest of the end of the trailer for City of the Wolves, it will also mention too, internet is required of sorts. I'm going to I'm going to just watch it while we're talking here with the yeah, sound no off, worries. of course, but because I don't want that interfering with this. But, you know, what is it? An internet con connection is required to access all of the game's content. Mm -hmm. So that that really begs the question. What's here? What are they putting on this thing? Here's my thoughts. Story mode, the mini games. Mm -hmm. online which practice side track side side note at least for online they confirmed it in the trailer we already knew about it beforehand roll back and cross play day one yep uh i imagine the online modes plus uh any of like your standard um fighting game modes i think those will all be included on the disc mm -hmm. i think it'll be a very highly functional product on launch i think that Really, it's just going to be the RPG mode that's going to be not included. The RPG mode. And I imagine Season Pass 1 is probably going to be a voucher or something. Yeah, probably. Just like Which it is was understandable. with KOF 15 if you got, when we got the special editions. Because, yeah, Team Pass 1 was just a, a voucher code. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see. So I, I said in my video, and I'm going to do this for sure. So when, we get, when I get a physical copy of City of the Wolves, I'm going to test it. Just like I did with Prince of Persia of the Lost Crown. And see, okay... Here's what you get if you just get the game itself. And this is what's installed with it. Because which if, is a good which is a good idea. It definitely gives uh the consumer the knowledge they need. Because I have a feeling, yeah, like if that if the RPG mode is not gonna be on the disc, that could be a bummer. Definitely. But it's nice that they're even including that. I mean, that looks awesome. And I wonder if that could be a prelude of sorts to what the Samurai Showdown one's going to be. That's what I was thinking, actually. And that was what I was trying to steer the conversation towards earlier. But I wanted to see if you would come to that conclusion yourself as no, well. No, I thought about that like after making the video. Be like, okay, RPG system, one-on-one -on -one fighting. But I have a feeling like this is just a testing bed. I don't think Samurai Showdown is going to use the exact same systems, but it's an idea of how the systems will work. I think you're right. Because we'll have to see how it turns out. But all the modes that they've shown and everything that has been announced, like they're even bringing back like the ghost mode from Samurai Showdown. Which is a good idea. Which I was very surprised about. I just hope it functions better. I imagine it will function better, and I imagine that's going to be a standard feature going forward because look at how people are loving that in Tekken 8. Mm -hmm. when it's well implemented yep um who do you think is going to be on the rest of the roster because we've got Mai, we've got terry we've got preacher we've got jenny we've got rock we've got billy we've got hotaru and we've got kushnud plus say uh, kevin sorry i mean mark i meant marco plus yep. tzok plus kevin so how many is that <laughs> There's 11 right off? now. There's at least 11 at least announced right now okay so who do you think the remaining six will be I think either we're probably going to get either Dong Won or Jae Hoon or both. I imagine both. Yeah, so then that's two slots right there. Mm -hmm. We're going to get another new character. Yep. We're going to get another so new that, character. So that's three right off the hop. So we got to find three more. Andy, Who do you think the Andy, other? Joe. So, okay, we just got to find one more, and I think it's going to be Alice. I don't think so. Why not? What about Kane? Oh, or yeah. Kane? I forgot. He's kind of the main antagonist. So, yep. That's we've called it. It's going to be Joe. It's going to be Andy. It's going to be Kine. Dong Wan and, and Jae Hoon, probably. Yep. That so that's going to be the base roster. You can lock that in. I'm pretty sure of that one. It's the theory. Like, at least I want to say for sure. Kine, I'm going to say for sure. Kine, Andy and Joe, because Andy was mm -hmm. in that teaser trailer. Yes, he was. And so was Kine. So, you know, they're both going to be there. Yep. So I and so was I'm Joe. Say those so. two for, are for sure. Joe probably will be as well, even though we didn't hear him in that. No, but we saw the art of him. Yeah. So that's that's the only thing we have to go off of. And so far, almost everyone from that sound from that teaser has been announced as yep. official. But I'm pretty yep. sure we're getting we have to get at least one more new character. I agree with you. Um. So the five DLC characters, who are we seeing? Alice. Like, I still want Alice. You, that's my highest pick. That's my highest pick, too. But for the sake of discussion, I'm just going to say Geese. Uh, plot twist. What if Geese is actually in the game as an 18th character? That would be hilarious. Maybe they'll do Nightmare Geese. Well, I mean, let's let, let's just say this. Fighting game lore doesn't mean anything. It, did it ever matter in the first place? Eh, sometimes it does. Uh, why else would we you know look what at I it? Meant. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, you look, knew if what you can I bring Hihachi back through the yeah. amount of crap that that guy goes through. Honestly, plot twist. What if Heihachi's a Terminator? Okay, so that's what happened then. That explains everything. <laughs> <laughs> I but, mean, it yeah. would explain why he's still alive, technically. Well, yeah, you bring back Heihachi, you bring back Bison. Yeah. Why not Geese? Exactly. But I, going back to what we were saying for DLC roster. So I, for me, Alice... I, I gotta have Alice. Blue Mary. I think she would also make the cut, too. Um, If I had to pick another one. I want Rick from Real Bounce. We need a boxer. We, we need, need a boxer, boxer anyways. R Rick would be the perfect fit, and I I feel like he deserves to be in another game. For sure. Uh, Duck King. Yes. If... <laughs> Look, if Duck King, you know there's going to be, a, I'm pretty, I'm going to call it right now, there will be a season two of City of the Wolves. That's going to happen. Of course. Of course. If Duck King doesn't make it, that's just a disgrace. I agree. Duck King needs to make it into the roster. Either put him in season one or put him in season two. Or hell, make him free DLC. Which SNK have done before. They may do that for boss characters. So if that's the case, I'm calling Wolfgang Krauser. Wouldn't surprise me. Because he's an infamous boss. What made him so infamous? Well, because he's just awesome and a badass. I mean, yes, but that's what... it. That's really it for me. <laughs> oh, he didn't have he didn't have famous SNK boss syndrome. Dude, every boss has SNK boss syndrome. What the hell are you talking? <laughs> what the hell are you on? <laughs> I meant he didn't have like an especially egregious SNK boss syndrome. Dude, they all do. <laughs> you know what I meant. Mm hmm. I was more just there's a spectrum of SNK boss syndrome when it comes out there. Yeah. Some are nicer than others, but that's very, that's like the exception rather than the rule. Yes, like a Tamaraga, much easier than most SNK character or bosses. They ain't no gonads. Mm -hmm. They're bad. But no, I think like Duck King needs to make it there. You want to bring back classic characters? Kim. Kim, yeah. I think Kim ne Kim should make the cut. If But if you have it Dong Wan and Jae Hoon, you really, you could probably get away without Kim, Cap Wan. You could, but... It would really lose something, I think, because they mm -hmm. could be like, okay, you get uh, Dong and other guy. Hoon. Jae Hoon. Yes. yes. You get you get both of them. They have kits that are similar to Kim, but... One's electricity, own unique... one's fire. Well, I was going to say each with their own unique flavors and shortcomings and then have Kim be like, nah, fucking broken. <laughs> well, make Kim... Well, then make Kim broken. I don't think Kim's broken enough in 15. He's kind of mid in 15. Fun Which to makes play, me but sad. Because I fun like to play, Kim. Though. Kim is awesome. Kim should just dominate the playing field. I agree. But basically my idea would be Dong and Jay are both in the game because they're fucking popular as hell. Mm-hmm. And their representation of the new generation. Have old man Kim and have him be busted and be like, he gets the moves of both of his sons, but better. And no elements. Yeah. Because he doesn't need that. Nope. Other characters, like, I want to see, I honestly want to see Freeman come back. I think we'll see him. I think he'll probably be DLC. Do you think they would also do that for Hoko tomorrow? Yes, because I do know he's a popular character. Mm -hmm. He kind of has to be there. Plus, it would be interesting to see what they do with him, given that Joe and, or sorry, Andy and Mai are both on the roster. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be special interactions and stuff? Yeah. Plus, we did hear him in the soundbite, so. So, what if he's part of base roster, though? That would be interesting, for sure. I mean, another thing they could also do for Seasons Pass is, like, introduce a new character in a Seasons Pass. Which I think would be the better way of going about it, because then they're like, oh, hey, we got something fresh. You want it? Well, you gotta play it, uh, wait for it to come out with the DLC. Mm-hmm. Like, that's one option they could do. But I, I also still think, like, for base game, maybe one more. Maybe just one more new character. What style would you like to see? Hmm. If you... Uh, oh, style-wise? Yeah. What martial art? Give me something like Chizuru or K-Dash. I'd like to see a Judo user. That could work. Because if you think about it, Judo's pretty grapple-heavy. Mm hmm There aren't really a lot of grapplers on this roster. With the once. exception of Tzok. That's what I was pointing out. Yeah. I think he's... Maybe, Kevin, do you think he'd be a grappler? I mean, he was kind of a uh, mix of grappler and... Uh, brawler brawler last so, time yeah, he's so. your hybrid so and they're probably going to keep him the same for city of the wolves yes also fun fact the voice actor in uh from 
the Trails series for English. It's the same one who does Randy in uh, Trails of Cold Steel 3, 4, and uh, Reverie. Which I'm playing on Kevin. the note of on dialogue. I think it's interesting that they're doing English VO for this game. I think so too. Also, I fucking love Mai's English VA. So far for these characters, they've all been pretty on point. I was expecting B. Jenny to be a little bit huskier. But that's my only real complaint because I kind of pictured her as a blonde femme fatale almost. So I was expecting a little bit lower registered voice, but she is a bubbly character. So, so no, that, it makes that's sense. where it comes into play because of that. Yeah. But yeah, we'll have to see how the rest of the roster turns out. But it's nice that you can you have the options of both English and Japanese. I do appreciate that. I appreciate whenever a game allows that. Are you going to be playing in English or uh jap probably jap just because i've played all the other ones but i want to experiment with english i'm gonna play it in english just because i always prefer that option when i have it i do want them to implement something i don't know how difficult it would be but in street fighter 4 you could toggle between the voices for the character that would be really neat because there are some characters i definitely prefer the japanese Mm -hmm. and like that's if they could do something like that for city of the wolves i think that would be a nice little touch because i mean have english speaking terry and japanese speaking say otaru that would be funny i i could see that happening like if if it's not that hard to implement i feel like that could be good that would be really neat but you made me think of something else actually for characters what's that what if we get a mr what if we get mr karate as a dlc character wouldn't surprise me to be honest but I have a thought about that, though. Did you see the jukebox? Yes. Why was Art of Fighting there? I think that was a nod to the fact that we're going to get Art of Fighting characters eventually. So I feel like that that could be their nod of saying, oh, hey, we're going to have an Art of Fighting character here. And it could be Mr. Karate, like Rio as Mr. Karate is what I'm thinking. Here's a curveball for you. What if it's Mrs. Karate? And well, they have Yuri. Well, I mean, time has passed. If Yuri becomes m the new karate she she better be overpowered as fuck <laughs> that would be so fun because and, you and can if that's the case you know i would just pick her all the time yes and you'd probably hear me rage because you don't <laughs> like it when i play yuri sometimes it's not that i don't like it it's just a case of you eventually annoy the crap out of me what can i say yuri's my girl i mean i like her and you can definitely always see the potential of her becoming broken in mm -hmm. the King of Fighters. So if they but made Yuri that, that could be interesting. Because I've gone back to that trailer. I'm still convinced that I hear Yuri's voice clip. You, you still think it's Yuri? I think it's in there somewhere, yes. Yeah, because like if it is Yuri, I don't see Yuri as base. No. I don't, what see if her, that, I don't see her as base. If DLC, maybe. What if that was them teasing who will be DLC, though? Possible. Because maybe they were like in a fluid situation and were like, OK, base roster, we're going to get the majority of the popular ones and whoever's ready. I need to watch that teaser trailer again. But um, you know how Yuri's got a pretty distinctive Hakoken or however it's said? Yep. Shokoken. The way that she delivered. Shokoken. Yes, thank you. Uh, that is what I keep hearing whenever I play that trailer. And I'm mm -hmm. like, OK, OK, that is distinct. I know that's Yuri kind of thing. I keep hearing it. So she could make roster as DLC. But uh, like I said, I don't see her as base. And like I said, what if they go for a curveball? Because we do see in the uh, Marco Rodriguez stage, the Mr. Karate mask. We do see that. And what is the gym also called? It's Yuri's gym. Exactly. So it could that's just what be got a nod for that. Which is what got me thinking, ah, what if she's DLC as Mrs. Karate? Well, that's what kind of made me think about it with Duck King, because if you look at the Terry stage, yeah. you see ducks. Exactly. And I think that SNK is being smart. I think they might be teasing who the DLC is with those little elements. But if they are actually in the stages, then they are actually in the stages. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just saying like... Because, I, yeah, another tease that I saw on the stage, as I actually remember now for Terry's, was IG, the ninja. Who's that again? He's, okay, I'm not He's the purple with... ninja from that. He, he, I believe he was in Art of Fighting. Ah, but he would also form the team. He would also be on Team anti Kyokujen in King of Fighters 11. And I believe he also teamed up with Iori and Billy in King of Fighters 95. Oh, I see. So IG has been in the franchise, but he just makes a... Brief, cameo. brief cameo yeah because he is from art okay so he is from artifice so you do That's see that another st another like nod to that but if if they don't put him in this game he's he could be in king of fighter 16 which i imagine will get announced not super soon but within the next two years well we know it's unofficially coming yeah kind of like we knew 
Fatal Fury was unofficially coming not long after the launch of KOF 15. Mm hmm. Because of Garo, Mark of the Wolves, Terry outfit. Yeah. Which I still find it funny that the pre order bonus here is Terry in his Fatal Fury 2 outfit. I know, that is pretty cool. So it would be like, okay, did they just go full circle here with this? I think they did. <laughs> I think that's going to be the thing. They're going to be like, yep, you're getting more. Eventually. Enjoy. Eventually. But costumes, I think, because... I do think, need to make the cut. Sorry? Costumes, I think, should make the cut. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, I, I forget what I was saying. <laughs> It'll come uh, back to you in fun. a minute. But, but no, basically, like, was... overall, we're excited for this game. And yes. But, April but basically... cannot come soon enough. Yep, but basically, I think, what I was trying to get at is I think they'll probably ping pong mm -hmm. Terry at like certain classic costumes, probably mostly with Terry teasing future stuff. Also, if they do do like a new costume for each of the characters, like even for like say mm -hmm. Garo characters, I'd be curious to see what their redesigns could look like. Yeah, me too. Though we know B. Jenny is not getting a new design. I don't know. They could do They could have used the design from King of Fighters All Stars. Uh, do you have a picture of that one? No, I do not, unfortunately, but I could see something like that. Like, if they include, if they decide to include a costume for characters, so. I think a lot of them will have alternate costumes, though. Mm -hmm. If not, that co that editor is just going to be people's playground for that. Yep. But yeah, expect, expect us to play this thing when it comes out in April. Yep. And it's April 24th, correct? Mm -hmm. Which is interesting because it's not going to make it for SWC, I think. No, I think you're right on that front. It's not going to make it for SWC, and I don't think it's going to make it for Evo Japan either. I think it might make it for Evo Japan. If it is, it's cutting it real close. But, I'm Evo, gonna but Evo in Vegas? For sure. It's definitely, yeah, definitely going to be there. Yeah, Evo Vegas for sure. Like, it's going to be there. That could be its debut, but Evo Japan could also be its debut. Okay, so I looked. Evo Japan will be May 9th through 11th okay, of so, next year. So it could make it. Yeah. Yeah, for some reason, I thought Evo Japan was happening in April. I mean, it usually does, so mm -hmm. I can see why you were thinking that. Mm -hmm. But we'll have to see with that. But yep. no, Fatal Fury, like, that that was the big takeaway. Same with Street Fighter stuff, but overall, Gamescom did have some interesting things. But I still want to dig through and see what else there is. Sure thing. I thought it was rather mid, personally. Mm -hmm. There wasn't really a lot that caught my attention. And what did catch my attention was stuff that I already knew was coming out anyways. So it's like, eh, whatever. However, I am excited for the PlayStation showcase that'll be happening in the very near future. We still don't have a date for that, though, do we? No, not an exact date. But Sony usually has them in September. Mm -hmm. Probably right before TGS or something or sometime before that. Mm -hmm. Because TGS is the end of September, right? Around the end of September? Mid mid September. Okay, we'll have to see what Sony shows off at their showcase then. I imagine they're going to announce a Wolverine release date, or at least give us something something for that. But as I said, with that Wolverine game, they have to beat Raven's game. That will be a fun compare and contrast video essay, don't you think? Yeah, comparing like you know how Raven made X Men Origins, and then how Insomniac is going to pursue Wolverine. I just, yep. the only thing for sure is that I just hope they keep the violence level high. They've already said it's going to be very, very violent. Okay, let's see, because yeah. Because, again, Origins was pretty violent, so let's see if it at least Let, meets that bar or goes higher. Let's put it this way. Insomniac said that it's going to be a hard M game. Okay. There's no... There's no sugarcoating. This is not a T rating like you saw with the PlayStation 2 version. Exactly. So at least but no, they've already thing. they've already said that they're going for a hard M rating. They want to do Wolverine justice. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if they do. But we'll find out like if they show that at the PlayStation Showcase, right? Which they're probably going to. I imagine they will. Um, I'm also hearing that Sony's going to announce a lot of stuff. Also, keep in mind, even though there was a leak at Insomniac, that's not all they're working on. Far from it. There's more to it than just that. There's a reason that they were like, eh, we're not paying. Because it's like they have so many other projects in the works that they don't care that the Marvel stuff got leaked. Because that's contract work. And a lot of it is going to be once they've got Wolverine out. It's just going to be a lot of reusing of assets so they can literally make the last couple games, which will be Spider-Man 3 the X and the X-Men game. They can make those lickety split and have them out pretty quick. Just as long as they make it, they make them good. That's the only thing at the end of the day. Well, here's the thing. Look at Insomniac's track record. The only bad game they really have on their resume is that one game that they did with EA. Fuse. Yes. Which was going to be something else initially. Yep. And then EA interfered. They did EA stuff. At least Microsoft didn't really interfere with Sunset Overdrive. No, but Insomniac barely profited from that one. Mm hmm. But at least they got to do something different. 
And it, it seems like that was something they were trying to do. Yep. And if you look at it, a lot of the DNA from that game made its way into Spider-Man. It's almost like over uh, Sunset Overdrive was a uh, test bed for Spider-Man. I would say it would. It was. That was them trying to get used to the new tech and stuff and seeing yep. if they could make it work. Exactly. But be excited for that PlayStation showcase. And if John's willing, I'll have him on for a podcast after that fact, because I will do my own reaction video and then a deeper dive discussion with him if he's interested. Well, we'll see when the time comes, right? Yep. Quickly, what legacy ip would you like to see sony bring back oh god there's so many i i want to i want a reboot of legend of dragoon i want a remake of legend of dragoon eh, i would definitely like that i was thinking more mascot platformers but <laughs> like i know you would probably want crash i mean that's an activision thing now sadly but yeah you want a jack i'd like a jack but uh, I am going to say this. Expect Sly Cooper stuff soon. If, I have a feeling that's going to be happening. If Astrobot sells well, PlayStation is committed to bringing back their legacy IPs. And from what I've been hearing, they're expecting well for Astrobot to be between 750,000 units and 1 million units sold. So if you want to see legacy IPs coming back, buy Astrobot, guys. This is their idea of saying, hey, you want these other things, buy this. Just like what Bandai Namco yep. did with the Tales game. Yep. And what Capcom did with the Darkstalkers collection. And we know how that went. Yeah, but then look at look at how good the Capcom fighting collection was. That was great. And it wouldn't surprise me if Capcom in the next two-ish years are like, okay, we're bringing Darkstalkers back finally. Actually, that's one thing I was surprised that wasn't shown. A new Darkstalkers game? No, a Marvel vs. Capcom release date. I'm hearing that's a Tokyo Game Show thing. I could see that there, yeah. I kind of thought that they could show it at Gamescom because that would be an epic spot for it, considering how hyped mm -hmm. it is. I am hearing that it's going to be an early 2025 game. Well, hopefully we don't have to wait too long. Exactly. Um, but do you think that uh, Capcom will bring Darkstalkers back? Perhaps at some point. But I, think I feel like that's because... going to be kind of a pipe dream for like a while because Capcom's busy with other things too. Mm -hmm. I think they will. And here's why. Mm -hmm. It's a really unique proposition on the fighting game market, which there's a lot of fighters coming out at this point in time. There isn't really a horror one. There isn't too much for horror fighting games, or at least like, you know, fantasy based. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of what I'm pointing out. They could really do something unique there. I think the only thing, though, if you were to bring back Darkstalkers, mm -hmm. don't make it don't make it look like Street Fighter 6. I don't think they would. I think they'd use the RE engine again, mm -hmm. which is what Street Fighter did, obviously. But and I think that they would it. stylize it, like say how SNK has with City of the Wolves. Give it kind of an artistic flair like that. And then I think Darkstalkers would do well. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm thinking kind of like a mix between the gritty realistic horror of the resident evil games mm -hmm. but with a more anime flair to it yeah because that would make it stand out too and i if it's anything also to see felicia to play as felicia again in darkstalker sign me up definitely or morgan in my case mm -hmm. morgan's good but for me i like felicia she's my favorite character you like cat girls <laughs> i didn't say that out loud why are you saying that for me because i'm the weird socially awkward host okay master roshi <laughs> But yeah, no. Okay, like what does Morgan say? Happen. What does what does Morgan say about me then? Wow, oh, you just like to be entranced by a succubus and have everything sucked out. <laughs> That's all on I that know. note. On that note, is there anything else you wanted to discuss, John? Uh, no. Gamescom, like I said, it was all right. We'll have to see what else of the future holds. Like, stay tuned for stuff coming up and like the PlayStation Showcase when that happens, and TGS and Game Awards. There's going to be things to discuss. Definitely. So, where can people find you, John? Well, if you want to, I have a YouTube. I also have a Twitch, which I do stream on, and also a Twitter or X. It's I still call it Twitter. You can't change my mind on that. All under the name John McBond. So if you want to come on by and say hi, I'd appreciate it. All right. Thanks for being on as always, John. Thanks for having if me. If you want to find... No problem. If you want to find him, follow the links in the description. And until next time, keep blazing that trail. <laughs>